Hello, welcome to the fourth uh, Agile Encounter. Uh, today, Scott Oliver, uh, together with me, Pavel Filinski, will be talking about um, about becoming an, an an agile coach. Uh, we prepared a few stories to share with you, but also a few um, a few interesting um, in, 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 interesting materials to uh, to look at. So let's take a look at um, what we will experience today. Uh, first of all, before we go into the direction um, of uh, the what, who is uh, an Agile coach, in, in, uh, how to become an Agile coach in general. Um, we need to find out what does it mean to be an Agile coach. There's no one definition. I think both Scott and I have different um, different points of view on the topic. Um, then Scott's journey, he will tell us how he became um, an Agile coach, what um, his story is. Uh, we, will, we will take a break then, and uh, I'm going to talk about... Uh, we're going to talk about um, what's the background of Agile coaches, because I believe you can, you typically don't graduate um, and, and become an Agile coach. There's something in between. Uh, there are different paths and we uh, we may explore it. Uh, I'm going to show my path as well. Um, uh, I hope you will like it. And then a topic slightly related to the main, main theme of our, our meeting today. So what's next? You are an Agile coach. What's next? Uh, is there any 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 career path um, uh, path defined. Um, let's start with the first topic. Um, Scott, I am really curious. What is an Agile coach? How do you define it? Hi, everybody. Thank you, Pavel. So it's a question I've been asked literally every single time I speak to anybody when I work with them. Like, what do you do? What's the value in what you do? Or what's an agile coach? It's a really difficult question to ask, especially if I'm speaking to people who don't, who I'm not working with, like friends and family. So what do you do for a living? It's really difficult to describe because uh, there's a lot of things, that, there's a lot of complexities involved. I think the way I like to sum it up is almost a change agent, somebody who's there to try and improve and really encourage others to improve and almost to become the best of their ability. I like to focus on the stuff on the right hand side of the words agile coach, so the, the, the coach part of it. So I've done a lot of coaching and I'm very much a firm believer in that an agile coach should start with the coaching side of things rather than go jump in and, and tell people how to do their job sort of thing because I've never experienced their jobs. I might not, I might not know exactly how they do their job, but I can certainly help guide them and, and ask them certain amount of questions um, that will help them become better in what they do. Um, the agile side of it is obviously another pathway. So I think um, an agile coach really needs to understand what the ag agile means. So you ask many different people what agile means and there's a different meaning. Uh, this, I've asked mm -hmm. literally this week, I've asked about 15 people uh, in interviews and coaching calls and not one single person give me the same. I like to bring it back to the manifesto that obviously from 2001 for software development, which is about values and principles. So it's about, and, and, I, and I, I really like to use the term, which is not mine, uh, Gunther over here and uses it in humanizing the workplace. Mm -hmm. So it's somebody who really tries to help others um, uh, improve and encourage them to be better in their workplace um, from an agile perspective. That's what I think. What do you think an agile coach is? Uh, so, somebody told me once, or maybe I, I read it somewhere, but if you can't explain what you do or any, any kind of topic to your grandma, you actually don't understand it, right? Because if you can explain in very plain, simple words, you're, you're good. So I tried with my mom, with my father. Uh, they, they have no clue what I'm doing. Um, uh, because uh, it, indeed, it's, it's, it's complicated. It's really complicated. I, I like your thought. You, may, you started with, um, uh, with agile. Also, Agile have different meanings. Very often on basic training sessions uh, on Scrum or, or, or Kanban, I, I start with, with a story that I interviewed in my life, previous life as, as a manager, uh, dozens of candidates uh, to become Scrum Masters. And the most simple question I could ask, ask them these days was, hey, what is Agile? Can you explain it to me? Different, different answers, but what was interesting, every single candidate started uh, their, their, their answer with the same words. For me, well, for me, Agile is. That's, that's for me, but what it is in general. But we're not going to that path. That's different, um, different discussion. Um, for me, Agile coach is a profession that, uh, that, that, that is related to many, many other, other disciplines, coaching, teaching, facilitation. Uh, but it's also a buzzword. 
Uh, this interesting, it's an agile coach, typically not agile mentor or agile consultant, although these names would be also visible. So I do agree with um, I do agree with your your, your definition. Um, but uh, very often I'm asked what is the difference between a scrum master and an agile coach, and here where um, uh, where something interesting happens. Uh, Years ago, I attended a training session um, by Lisa Atkins and Michael Spite, and they showed me uh, this model, the one that I'm showing on screen um, in here as well. Uh, if you are attending IC Agile um, the courses, you could be familiar with, with, with this one. Uh, there are, according to their uh, them, uh, three levels of Agile coaching as a profession. The very basic one is Agile Team Facilitator, a person who facilitates an Agile Team works. Many would say, and I disagree, that that would be Scrum Master in Scrum, if this is the method of choice. Um, I disagree because Scrum Master doesn't work with the team only. Scrum Master works with the entire organization, product owners, stakeholders, whoever's needed, and it's written actually there in, in the Scrum Guide. Um, then there's an Agile coach working perhaps with a department, perhaps with multiple teams, maybe with Agile team facilitators, and somebody that um, they, who they name Enterprise Agile Coach, so, so a person who works with executives. That's how this concept was, uh, was sold to me. Uh, Scott, do you like it? Yeah, no, I, I I do, and I don't at the same time. I think oh. it puts context around things. I think an agile coach and agile team facilitator are kind of the same thing. I think it's a you're a team coach. You're working with people. You're working with teams. It might be one or multiple teams. I think the a thing I've I've always struggled with is the difference between an agile coach and a scrum master. I think I've experienced a lot of people who are scrum masters or are scrum masters and still are to this day who really focus just on their little silo team and never step out of their comfort zone and actually go and work with the program, mm -hmm. the, you know, the product, the, 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 the wider, the, the enterprise, the leadership. And I think no matter how good your team is, you ain't going to get anywhere without stepping out of that comfort zone and actually going working with the organization and the enterprise level. So I think, you know, a scrum master needs to step into that. So what's the difference between an agile coach and a scrum master, which is obviously a different question. Uh, so that's always been a, a bugbear in mind. I don't think there is, apart from your focus mm -hmm. on scrum, I think a natural coach needs to needs to probably broaden their their frameworks out a bit. Um, but essentially, the the ethos is the same. But uh, yeah, agile team facilitator. Obviously, the IC agile the IC agile route starts with this. Then there's the coaching, and obviously mm -hmm. further on as well. So I do like it. I just think it and it can be it can be misleading because some people go, oh, therefore an agile coach is yeah. more important, or an agile coaches they get paid more. And sometimes I'm with you. That actually works so. I, I'm with you t t totally. So I, I like it, and I don't like this uh, this model at the same time. It, it gives you well. Um, it is a nice concept. I think it's useful indeed. Uh, but especially if you compare it to the role of a Scrum Master, uh, this set of accountabilities in Scrum it might be misleading. Scrum Master technically should be everywhere over um, over here. Um, I heard an interesting comment once, a few years ago already, from uh, Wojciech Walczak from, 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 Eric, from our, our company. Um, the, the, his thought was very, um, the, very interesting. The difference, he said, between Agile coach and Enterprise coach, in his opinion, is not only about the skill set. Uh, because some, somebody would say this is a development path. You become t Agile team facilitator only then you become an Agile coach. Maybe team facilitators report to you. That would be odd. And then you become enterprise Agile coach. That, that shouldn't be like that. But he said there is an interesting difference. It might be that actually Agile coach or Agile team facilitator is way, way more skilled than enterprise Agile coach. Um, if we take a look, um, all the skills needed to work with teams for instance, or with the product. But the significant difference, and I agree with that actually, is the reaction time. If something's wrong in the organization, somebody's behaving not according to Scrum rules, for instance, typically enterprise agile coach reaction would be emitted, while agile coach would, for instance, wait until a relevant moment appears, maybe wait till the end of the sprint to run a, a retrospective. So the reaction time also systems thinking um, um that would be the difference uh, where do you see yourself on that picture by the way uh all of the above it depends on what context i mean so mm -hmm. one day i could be at the, in the blue the enterprise agile call the next day i'm facilitating something for the junior team or whatever that might be um it, it makes no difference for me uh there's there's a there's a there's a goal in terms of there's 
improvements to be made and helping people get there um, and guiding them and whichever hat I need to put on that day. If I'm working with senior leadership team, I'm working across the like multiple programs or the executive directors of the organization, which I've done in the last couple of years is, you know, facilitating workshops for them. Technically, I'm still facilitating, but I'm doing it at that level. They're just mm -hmm. people at the end of the day and everybody's got different needs. So you need to really change and respond to change and how and really be agile really it's quite ironic really it's in the names in the job title so i see myself across all of them really at different times mm -hmm. so, 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 so 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 what's your journey how have you uh, become an agile coach oh dear uh wow. yeah so it, it's a, it's always a, an interesting one people ask me this like when you saw i've been doing digital and technology and working with people and organizations for many years. I used to be a freelance user experience designer. I used to design websites and apps and stuff. And at the time I used to get called in to organizations and, and I'm talking like design agencies. I had my own clients and stuff. Uh, they used to call me in like when they're really under the pressure, Scott, we need your help. Can you come and help us like an extra pair of hands? I was a designer. I, was, I used to do the actual work. Um, I was no, never even heard of this agile thing. And I used to, Look at the way they were working when I got there, and I understood straight away that actually you weren't delivering. You weren't delivering because you weren't organised. So I was quite organised, and I managed to get them working in some sort of Kanban system, without actually understanding what that was at the time. This is going back a long time. Did that for many years, seven or eight years as a freelancer. Um, moved into my first professional corporate job. Had to wear a shirt and pants, and tie, and that sort of stuff. And I wasn't an agile coach at the time. I was actually called an e-commerce manager, and I was part of a team. I was still a doer. But it was very much on the the um, the delivery side and trying to encourage people to, and always acting as that changes and trying to encourage improvements where you see issues. You always not necessarily try and fix them, but try and encourage others to try and come up with the problems and the solutions, but trying to improve the system and the teams and that I was working with and whoever I was working with at the time. And then um, over the years, it just progressed into more delivery roles and more more that role until I eventually become a scrum master. And I and I really engrossed myself in that scrum master role. And I and I think I was quite confident in the fact that, and I understood the scrum master role that I wasn't just working with the team. So I stepped out of the scrum master role, uh, being working with the team from pretty much day one, and all of a sudden making myself into the more into an enterprise agile coach role. Because I found that you had to do that because of the impediments or the organizations I was working in at the time. Um, because if you didn't do that, then you were never, we were never going to do anything. The team was always getting blocked by, you know, various different things going on. You know, this access to this and permissions for that. So as part of the being a good scrum master, mm -hmm. unblocking some sort of stuff and then encouraging others to do the same, I stepped out of that. Um, so my transition into a, to an agile coach as such came a few years ago. Uh, when I eventually got over my ego and go, I'm not an agile coach, I'm a scrum master and, I, and I'm doing the job really well. Um, and I got to the mindset of actually, I do more than just scrum here. So I do mm -hmm. believe a good scrum master, a great scrum master should do more than scrum. But then really, are you an agile coach? And I think I was talking to our colleague, Tony Richards on a, on a course a couple of years ago and uh, just before COVID and I was still in that mindset of like, oh, it's really annoying having to call myself that. But then I realized, actually, maybe I should start calling myself an agile coach. And I've just got used mm -hmm. to it over the years. Um, but the transition has been a long, hard slog. But I think what really helped us is just having that confidence and the ability to challenge and the ability to not take no for an answer solving and then mm -hmm. challenge in the right way. My background, yes, it was in design and user experience. It was all about the journey, all about the user. And obviously what's right for the user and obviously what the value is but i really focused on the people side of things i really wanted people to do well and i wanted to bring the best out of other people and i think i think that's you know if you get a good agile coach they should probably have the same thing and have the ability to yeah. challenge the amount of times i see coaches coming into organizations or scrum masters or whatever or people just coming into organizations where they are literally will do as they are told and not challenge i don't think they're doing the job is not doing the job you know, justice mm -hmm. really so, so scott as far as i can understand you that there was no thick line i was not and now from this day i am an agile coach how long was the transition was it a matter of a year five years a decade <clears throat> i would say a previous organization if i'm adding up the years and organizations is mm -hmm. about it's probably about nine or ten now but if i was to include my previous 
the life as a designer and helping people in that respect, then probably a lot longer, um, mm-hmm. a good 10 years, maybe more. But um, whether whether I would have the confidence to go and work at the enterprise level right back then, I'm not quite sure. I certainly I certainly think you need to do that in order to be successful in what you're doing. But um, yeah, a good, a, good, a good 10 plus years, I would say. Mm-hmm. There's no definitive line across that was merged, some job titles changed, that sort of thing. But the, the, the behaviours, the values are always there. All right. Uh, f- thank you, Scott. There's a question uh, in the chat window. I'm not sure if it's to, to ask because somebody has answered already, but uh, th- the question is, do you have any coaching, pure coaching, professional coaching qualifications? And I think we may answer the question uh, in a while because this is a very nice segue to uh, one more chart that I wanted to show to all of you. Uh, this is, again, inspired by IC Agile work. This is one of few models that I serve that tell us what are what are the competences, what are the skills of agile coaches, no matter of the level, by the way. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not going to go into uh, through, through all of that um, because we um, we have our own topic of, of the webinar today. But in, in, in brief, uh, if you are an agile coach of whatever level, um, uh, definitely you grow nonstop, I think, to the end of your professional career in lean and agile world. There are more and more practices, more and more more and more uh, techniques, experiences that you can get over there. So this is the core um, uh, core, core part of that. Um, there are four, according to this model, four key areas of competences that are very, very helpful, useful in your job. Uh, this is training. Um, this is mentoring, facilitation, and, and coaching. Uh, it doesn't mean, I guess, that in order to become an enterprise agile coach, you need to be certified coach, certified facilitator, trainer, and mentor. You could be, by the way, but it doesn't mean that you have to. It's simply you need to understand these. Um, um, you have to have some skills, relevant skills, relevant to um, to your job in all these um, all these areas. Uh, do you have any coaching qualifications as such? Because out of all these four major uh, competence areas. It's Agile Coach, not Agile Mentor, Trainer, or Facilitator. That's the name of the profession, right? Yeah, I do. Um, I think coaching is one of those things that once you get the concept and you practice it and learn it and really practice it mm-hmm. and get the experience, what I understand there's, there's organizations out there, government bodies, ICF, etc., and and various different you know groups and companies that train you and how to be a coach and that sort of thing i really think you it's great but the thing that you get from that is the experience the one the coaching qualifications i've got is i've got my practitioner and master practitioner of nlp which is neurolinguistic programming which is a slightly pseudoscience sort of like non it is coaching and it uses coaching techniques it goes a little bit into therapy and mind and that sort of stuff um it's not an official recognized by uh, ICF, um, you know, the Federation, International Federation of Coaching, I can't even remember what it's called now, International Coaching Federation, that's the one, ICF. And uh, it's not recognized by them, which is frustrating because I've got the hours and I just can't get that. I need to do a little bit more. So I've got the qualification in, in that and in coaching. Mm-hmm. But I think, I generally think once you've got the basics and understanding of it, if you practice coaching and actually understand what that is, if you, it's another one of those things of what is coaching and, and people always jump to the left hand side and jump into mentor and think that's what coaching is. And, and actually, I, I don't necessarily believe that at all. Um, but yeah, I, it's one of those. I know loads of professional coaches, nothing to do with agile that have got, mm-hmm. that haven't got coaching licenses that are absolutely just mind blowing to work with. I've worked with many coaches like that before. They've mm-hmm. not had the qualification, but I do recommend getting some sort of career training and, and, and coaching yourself so you get to understand it and then you can practice, practice, practice. Practice makes permanent, that's what I say. Fair enough. Uh, there is something, there is something um, here on, on, on the picture that down there, um, there's something that I actually wanted to pull, um, the, to, to talk about um, the, right now. Um, technical business or transformation paths. Um, uh, in comparison to the, 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 the lean agile part and um, and um, those blue areas of competences, uh, the, these these yellow bricks over here are uh, uh, y- your history, your experience. What did you do before uh, before becoming an agile coach or taking taking this path? If you used to be um, an engineer, software engineer, quality assurance engineer, it doesn't have to be software. Um, the most likely your and then you became an agile coach. Most likely your your 
you're good, you're here you know, on, on the technical path. That means that uh, in comparison to other coaches, perhaps you will be way more effective working with developers, working with teams because you used to be a, a member of, um, of, of, of a development team and you, you understand their, their concerns. If you used to be a um, business analyst, maybe a UX researcher, maybe a product manager, so you work with business, you are from business, you work with a product, uh, perhaps your, your path towards um, towards becoming an agile coach is a business path. You will be way more effective in comparison to other coaches working with, uh, with uh, the product owners. And if you were, I don't know who, HR, manager somebody involved in transformation organ in, in organizational transformation in any um any kind of digital transformation for instance you understand systems thinking you understand um uh, you understand uh, the ways how we change organization you understand the culture of organization system co coaching including um, perhaps your background your path is transformation path you, you would be way more effective working with organization if you compare compare yourself with other um um, other coaches. Uh, what is your path? Because uh, I, I would place yourself based on your history somewhere between technical and business one. Am I right? I was on the left hand side, the technical side, and I, uh, from a from a professional career sort of thing. Uh, I was a doer in the team. I was a designer, UX UX designer. I made pretty pictures and made things made things uh, work for users originally. And then I moved into like uh, I call I would never call myself a web developer uh, back in the day because mm -hmm. that that I wasn't ever a developer a real developer could code things in one line that I could do in ten but I could make them I make it work make the front, it was a front end development making pretty mm -hmm. pictures on the web work uh, when you click that button and nothing <clears throat> nothing worked from there but the button was on the page so I was on the left hand side of the technical path that's why I would place myself very much in that. Fair enough. All right. Uh, my path, my path would be uh, slightly similar, maybe towards towards business one. Uh, my story is slightly um, is slightly different, uh, but also similar in terms of the transition period. Um, I started um, as a developer pro programmer years ago. Uh, perhaps not the smartest engineer in IT these days. Really, uh, my heart, my heart was beating uh, in in a different area. That was Please sit down, everybody. Project management. Um, so very, very fast, I became a project manager. Not an agile one, but a very waterfallish, heavy metal waterfallish project manager in a German company, by the way. Um, and that was nice, actually. Um, at some point of time, I had this uh, privilege and opportunity to see organizational transformation and be part of that. An agile transformation should be the corporation decided um, to move from um, the current ways of work towards agile. Uh, we got excellent trainers, uh, really those that, who you know from books, authors of many books that we all, um, all read. And we saw them all, uh, we learned, but uh, moreover, these days, 15, 16 years ago in, in Poland, we didn't have so many Scrum Masters, Agile coaches, professional ones. If you were to hire one, I guess there wasn't a lot of them. So we didn't have anybody to learn from. That's why uh, whatever we learned was so emergent. It was it was learn, learning by doing, by failing, a lot of failing. Uh, we had support of these international recognized coaches, but, but they visited us for a week, once a year or half a year. So there was not a lot of support over that. Um, my career path then uh, turned a little bit toward the middle part on the chart, business one. I became product manager, product uh, pro product owner. So I work with business a lot. I liked it. And it's only 10 years or so since I became full-time agile coach. Um, although nowadays, I would say it's more like consulting, broader management consulting. That, 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 that's what I do. Um, and and fun fact, fun fact is that um, if we take a look at the picture that I showed before, the one with competences, I think it all started with facilitation because that's what you do initially. You run the meetings, you want them to be very, very good. But as I progress on my career path, step by step, I realize that I need simply more um, uh, more skills and other competences. And it was never like that, but I thought, oh, I'm going to become a certified coach. But quite early, I found out what coaching is and what are the basic techniques of asking so-called powerful questions. And that was enough for years. And when I grew up, I thought uh, professionally. 
I thought uh, that's not enough. There's way more, and I I I I took I took relevant um, school of coaching, no certificate by the way, because I needed skill. I, I did never wanted to be a professional coach. I need skills to to support my um, my job, my my profession. Same with training, by the way. Um, so that was um, that was me. That doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think, like I say, the experience is key. You can go and do a training course. It's the same as a scrum master or a coach. You can go and do a fourteen-hour training course. It, it doesn't really make you. It gives you the basic skills, but you need to go out there and practice it. That's why I say practice and experiment, especially with coaching facilitating. Mm -hmm. You get used to doing it and it almost becomes second nature and how you should respond how you should behave so yeah definitely uh, i i'm looking nowadays at uh, at people who are starting their career professional career and i observe more and more it's not not a big crowd but more and more people who whose first job is maybe not an agile coach but a scrum master typically they join scrum teams mm -hmm. so graduate studies or even not um, there's an internship, it becomes Scrum Masters immediately. Um, on the one side, I think, wow, that's, that's a hu huge leap. If I compare uh, uh, how, how we started Agile Journey years, uh, years ago, on the other side, I think we miss a lot of on the job experience. You can, you can become an Agile coach instantly from day, day one of our career, but it takes years anyway to. Um, uh, uh, to mm. see what and how works in different industries with different teams. I encourage everybody, for instance, to experiment. If you uh, your first agile coaching position was in an international corporation, awesome. But find your next job should be maybe a startup, maybe something small up to 200 people, completely different dynamics, different challenges. But also you can bring your experience from big corporation where we have some procedures. It's not so much mess. Um, to a startup for the benefit of the startup and vice versa, by the way, depending on where you uh, where you are and where you uh, where start. I wonder, Scott, what your idea is. Um, what is the career path on Agile Coach? You can be a better and better Agile Coach, I believe, right? You can take the ladder. So I, I focus on teams now. I'm focusing as an Agile Coach on on multiple teams, um, and now I'm enterprise Agile Coach. It's really one path, but um, okay. I'm nearly forty. I will be retired in twenty, maybe thirty years. Can I? Should I be an Agile Coach forever? Next thirty years, I can be only better and better, or, or are there any other possibilities what do you think uh, i think for me the people we worked with the executives the leadership teams the managers within organizations they're the ones that we're encouraging and, and trying to help change and, and i think when i think about what i do in a daily job i almost think what when i do in the future is like maybe i'll take maybe i'll do one of those roles maybe i'll, I'll take mm -hmm. one of those and i've got a real chance and i'm one of the decision makers that will make the decisions and make and and, and really uh, really like take all my experience and knowledge and put that into this one organization. I don't know, it's, it's an interesting one. I, I, I sometimes wondered myself um, whether, I, whether I should go down that route sooner rather than later or, or not. I, I, I'm, I must admit, I'm quite enjoying helping and I love being able to help multiple things. And I want to try and get as much experience as I possibly can before I possibly would move into that. Um, yeah, I think maybe taking a role in inside an organization at a senior level where you can really foster the experience and put that into practice is, is something, whatever that role might, role might be. Mm -hmm. What about yourself? Um, I'm asked this question quite often during training sessions and, uh, well, you, you can do, do, do whatever, right? Anybody. I, I, I know a few project managers who at some point of their life thought, yeah, I'm not going to do it anymore. Let me open a shop with flowers, for instance, literally tiny shop with flowers, not nothing online, just, just, just a shop or a garden, whatever. But uh, if we are serious about mainstream, <laughs> mainstream carry paths, I would say, uh, yes, you can, you can be better and better in agile coaching. And it is a way. And I have people who love it. I know people who think, find themselves as, not skilled enough to speak to leaders, to executives, for instance, 
because it requires different language, perhaps different experience as well. But we are awesome agile coaches as such, and we want to just do it, do it forever. So that's that's one thing, and I wouldn't be afraid of that. Uh, another one, slightly partially, my um, uh, my, my path uh, to become a trainer. Uh, very often you find out that being in the strainer stance of agile coaching is actually fun for you and you like it and you're good at it. So you become a trainer, perhaps licensed trainer, certified trainer. Um, I, I know people who sort of quit quit uh, their agile coaching um, uh, job and become independent trainers, just just delivering training, uh, living from that. Um, I, I think there's a way also to become a consultant, so uh, do the same. Coaching, facilitation, mentoring, but not from the perspective of Agile only, but broader consulting, looking from a system perspective on the organization. But what is really inspiring to me are these few people I met in my life who changed their Agile coach role or Scrum Master role or Enterprise Agile coach role um, and became managers. Few of them even executives of big companies. There are also managers, as I observe them right now, because all we all we teach, all we preach as agile coaches related to uh, being people-centric, people-focused, related to culture and so on, they know it. <laughs> They've been there and they simply uh, simply um, apply it uh, into their um, their their, uh, their life. Uh, do you know any any people like that? We just pivot. I was an agile coach and now I just turned I, around. I don't off the top of my head. Um, I know that I'm quite excited for the future for future CEOs because I feel like there's a lot of people that do what we do that will possibly take that route. And I know I know many really fantastic coaches that I think like who are inspiring. And I think if they were in an organization, that's the type of person that you would want to sort of to lead and you want to be like, I would love to work with that person. I would love to work for that person. Um, there's, there's, there's many people I've worked with over the years that possibly could have been in an agile coach role, but maybe they, they, they haven't really done that. I've seen scrum masters move into more management roles. Um, I think the, the, the catch is, is whether you keep the traits and the behaviors of what you had when you had the job title of a coach or scrum master. Um, into that management role and you are getting called a manager uh, I think that's always the difficult thing and there's an expectation in organizations that you have to act a certain way and if you're not seen to be you know um, depending on how the culture is an organization you're not seen to be like managing things and you know building the empire then maybe you might uh, be perceived a different way but I think the, the real true people are the ones who follow the more leadership path and, and are almost flipping the, the hierarchy upside down and the ones mm -hmm. that are saying I'm, I'm I'm there working for the team, not the team working for me the other way around. So I'm there to serve them. What can I do to help them? I think I think that's the ones that are going to be making the, the future CEOs. And it's quite exciting. I think when you look at all the innovators around the world and all the big organizations that have really like disrupted the world, the people who are, who are leading them, they're all you know visionaries, etc. And some of them probably don't go down the mm -hmm. coaching lead seven leadership group as a lot of them that do. And uh, it's quite uh, now with the way the world is and obviously moving over the time, it'll be interesting to see in the future what how many well future CEOs uh, CEOs of the future will be really interesting to to follow that. I know a few people, uh, I think a lot of people who started being um, agile coaches or scrum masters part time. I was an injury. I used to be an injury, but I'm also a bit an agile coach and then full time agile coaches. Uh, do you know anybody who had a different trip? So I am full time agile coach, and actually I'm actually becoming part time agile coach, part part of somebody else. The, the question, the reason why I'm asking is, I don't know what's happening in the UK, but it's so often I receive a job offer to become an agile coach slash project manager, and I'm confused. Yeah, I mean, I've had uh, I know people who who were in a scrum master role that missed the development side of things and they just really wanted to get their hands dirty so they've went back in so they kind of went uh, mm -hmm. full circle so they started being a developer then moved into a scrum master or a natural coach role and then went into a development after role because they've, they've, they really miss it and they don't want to be hands-on so during their time they did a drew overall coach slash whatever but in terms of when you see the the project manager slash agile coaches i always tend to get a bit worried about that because really are they actually wanting somebody who's real changes and you know, they want just a, a project manager there's nothing wrong with 
the project management at all whatsoever. They've you no know, fit for purpose and all that, but are they really wanting that? And if I was to take that role on, let's just pretend to do, would I, uh, how would that be perceived when I say mm -hmm. I act in a certain way? Uh, it, it, it would be, a, it would be, a, it's a really difficult one. But I, I have seen a lot of roles in the last couple of years, Scrum Master, or Agile Coach, and then they add on what they really want, <laughs> uh, delivery manager, project manager, uh, developer. I, I've seen, um, uh, what is the one? Um, the product owners are, are similar. They, they seem to have a lot of those as well. Mm -hmm. So you're a technical product owner. I don't know what the difference is. <laughs> It's yeah. an interesting, interesting one. Uh, what made my day f literally a few days ago on LinkedIn, I think I shared um, earlier with you, somebody is looking for Angular Junior Scrum Master. Yeah, did. Um, fair enough. Um, I crafted a picture, and the picture is a sort of summary of what we were talking about right now. So um, different, different ideas, different paths. Uh, for further development of agile coaches, either becoming a professional trainer, full-time trainer, or consultant, maybe manager, I'm really interested in what the other path, the yellow path, or who could be. Um, I think uh, there are as many stories as um, um, as people um, as people to share. Senior mobile scrum master, that's awesome, awesome, also great, um, and, and awesome. I'm looking at, into the chat window. Um, we are about to finish very very soon. Before that, I wonder if there are any questions from the audience i'm turning on the q a mode so whatever question you will put into the window scott and i will see it we can give you one minute for that let's give it a try double scrum master smsm twice the value there i heard about bdsm that's business delivery scrum master just in case you didn't know I'm sure there's value in all the all the roles. I think so. My impression is also that uh, mm -hmm. sometimes you, as a professional coach, might be a professional agile coach. You might be scared of a job offer, agile coach slash project manager. But if 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 the customer of, of yours, the company is early on their journey, uh, it's okay. They don't understand all the concepts. They confuse the concept. And it's actually you who would help the company change the kind the way they describe job job, job offer in a year or two or or, or three um so um so it's not so bad not so bad um, um to, to be better um, i didn't say that uh, i can't see any questions over here uh, that leads yeah. us uh, somebody's typing so if i see yeah i was going to say if someone is typing but it might take a what while what are now. you most proud of scott what are you most proud of i believe in the in the context of agile um being an agile coach uh for me it's the light bulb moment when you take somebody who possibly doesn't know anything about agile doesn't really work and are willing to give it a go that's crucial the intent i was going to try it with intent i think if you're going to do something without intention you're never going to do it so the ones who possibly don't understand it, but they're willing to give it a go and let's try it. And then them getting the light bulb moment and really changing it. Like there's a bunch of people we're working with mm -hmm. right now who, who didn't have a clue back in September, who are now teaching others and training others, not in like day to day, but like really helping each other and helping like, oh, this is what we're doing. So it's the it's the moment where I see others really growing and, and, and seeing what I seen many years ago and, and what I think many people who fall in love with the role uh, and helping people. Um, uh, you know, when they when they see that and you can see that switch, I, I love that. Mm -hmm. I almost it's really difficult for me because I'm like, what role, what part did I play in that? Well, when I have asked my coach or ask people that I'm talking to, and they sort of say, yeah, but you actually played quite a pivotal role in that, and I, and that's something I've always struggled with, is saying like, what role do I play in that? But I think having that agile coach, someone there to to help them, is will, will make a massive, significant difference. So yeah, it's it's definitely something I'm. Um, proud of and it happens m many times over mm -hmm. the time where i can i can literally just go on holiday or shut my laptop down and the, everything just runs everything fine and the, they don't need me anymore is, is, is perfect which is uh not great if you're a designer or a developer in a team because then you're out of mm -hmm. job but as a coach it is what about yourself pavel what are you i, I just about? noticed we have we have plenty plenty of questions uh, so i'll be i'll be fast with my answer i, I think the same uh, i i really enjoy that moment if somebody struggles with new concept and it clicks 
and these people who uh, were against agility now become really um, uh, really cool with that and they became advocates of of agile ways of work in, in the company uh, but there's something uh, else uh, as well um, i prefer my favorite scrum value is focus so i prefer longer engagement with one single customer um uh, we we have this journey together and i have opportunity to work with uh, people who are for instance engineers and they become scrum masters agile coaches and i coach them i mentor them and i, and I watch them grow and become fully independent agile coaches sometimes even certified trainers so uh, my, my, my job is done over here that's satisfying that's satisfying but it, it requires a few years of of um of, of work with uh, with them we need to speed up a little bit so the next question that uh, goes to you because i have no clue how to answer it uh, would be um what was your toughest uh, case uh, you faced as an agile coach i've just I just read that one and um, there's millions of them, but I've literally been talking about this today. So I'll, I'll give you the story. Um, I was <clears throat> working with my current current client actually, and they've had previous Agile coaches in. And <laughs> even so, the, the leader in that area refused to call me an Agile coach in front of anybody else. And when he introduced me, he didn't say I was an Agile coach because they had been tarnished by a previous person and they have forced processes on them. They really just didn't, just wasn't very ethical in my mind. It's so much so they use really bad language towards in certain individuals. And it was really tough gig when you first go in because like everyone stereotypes you, you're just the same as those other people who've had this before. And I had one lady literally uh, two days ago say that, uh, what's your experience in Agile? And they said it was depressing and really negative. So it's really tough when you've started, you've got to try and work with people who are so far removed from what we would like them mm -hmm. to be in terms of their mindset because they've been tarnished before. So trying to build that rapport to try and to then take them on that journey, it's extremely tough. Um, but the, the first case I talked about there, you know, those, these are the same people I was mentioning before who are now going off and helping others. It, it, it is it is possible. And these people were told they didn't have an agile mindset. And, and I just, just it's so ludicrous to even think that. And I think it was because of the coach and how, how that person interacted with the teams and the people and the leadership. Uh, so, gotcha. yeah. It, in my current experience yeah everything's always tough for us so everyone's different thank you thank you scott uh there's one more question i can do with this one do you have your personal grow plan as an agile coach i guess that if you are employed so you are internal agile coach you have your personal grow plan as everybody has and uh, if you're independent or you, you're incorporated you're, you're in a company of agile coaches i i think it's healthy to have one so i i personally do have my personal grow plan it's not necessarily growing in agility as such if i find out that i need some skills that are actually not so not, not on the picture training facilitation mentoring agile in but elsewhere and it's something that i actually um it could be useful in my job i, I do it I, I i just do it and it's i've reading a book a lot of books actually um reading blog uh, blog articles of various people attending training sessions or something that uh, i find the most important selecting your next customer uh, a few few years ago i joined a completely different uh, different industry um oil and gas industry that was uh, that was my first gig uh, these days in oil and gas um that was inspiring how to how to use same methods and practices outside it or finance or banking or big pharma but but i was uh, used to it that would be my answer uh, not only training sessions or um um or, or books but being self-aware of what else is interesting and you never never n never touch it uh, that might be useful um one more question uh, does certification help you to become an agile coach i only in the last since i've become a, a consultant like contractor in since 2018 i've only recently started mm -hmm. getting certifications. I think yeah. the certifications are really powerful because uh, uh, you get in a room with people and you get asked real world questions with a really experienced trainer. Hopefully that trainer is also a coach, as in their job, they have done it, they are doing it, still practicing, so they're up to date. Um, and I think there's nothing better than learning that and learning environment, but is it going to make you a seasoned agile coach? Probably not. It's your experience on the ground. It's your trial and error. It's your practice. It's your working with real situations. That's going to really help you become 
you know what you want to be um mm-hmm. but they are a good starting point i would i would a lot of people knock them and say ah they just you know a lot of people are going around collecting them and that might be the case but i think it you know it's just understanding that you know just because they've got that certification doesn't mean they're any better than anyone else and i've actually personally suffered with that uh i've had people who just got their really basic scrum master course that's knocked them knocked them back the recruiter knocked them back over uh, knocked me back over that person because they had that qualification um mm-hmm. and you know you just live and learn so i started getting getting them then uh, but there's only so much you can do before you you uh, you I, need to get real world experience i, I think i have a similar uh, similar approach but uh, i'm very pragmatic so if i need certification for something i will do it yeah. For instance, I wanted to become a licensed trainer. I needed to 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 to, to get the certificates because that was mandatory, and that was the only the only reason why I I, I did that uh, earlier. Not really. If I see there's an interesting job offering, and I really want to get that job, but the mandatory prerequisite is to, to be, become a holder of a certificate, I would uh, I would uh, I would um, um, give it a try. Simply, but as such, again, me personally, I, I I had little respect into into certificates. Still, when you take a look at different job offers, they're asking for for certificates, so it's up to um, up to you. I I remember a conversation I had ten years ago. Uh, all my, my my colleagues, my my peers, uh, they used to um, they used to um, get a certificate in uh, proficiency in English English language, and I never had. Um, and the consequence was that uh, each time I wanted to get a new job, uh, I, had an, I had an English test, English language test. And I passed it, obviously, as you can hear, I guess. Um, uh, having certificate would simply um, allow me to skip this one tiny step, but I thought uh, the, the amount of work preparation, money that I had to pay for the certificate was not worth it these, uh, these days. Uh, two more questions before we close. Let me take a look at the board. Um, uh, on the board, who inspire you as an agile coach in your life? Do you have somebody who coach you or inspire you, Scott? I think this one goes first of all to you. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of books. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kim Scott, who wrote Radical Candor, nothing to do really with agile. She worked at Google and all sorts of things. There's a lot of um, management and uh, people who in business, a lot of names, um, too many to really name. Kim Scott, if you haven't read Radical Kanda, uh, I can't pronounce the lady's surname, Tasha Ulrich, uh, who wrote a book called Insight. It's all about personal development. So I think that's what really you need to really master before you can start helping others is to work on yourself. And that's that's probably something I missed out on my journey is that, um, Person development is a, is a massive part of what I did to get where I am. Um, everybody inspires me day to day. You inspire me when I work with you and, and when we've done work together. Tony, who I work with, he inspires me literally every time I speak to them. Uh, Voice to everybody we work with. The people who have no idea uh, about Agile inspire me because they see so much in what they do in their lives. Mm-hmm. It, it just inspires me to, to really want to do better and, and help more people and, and deliver more value using the values and the principles of what we what we do it's a corny answer but it's true i think my answer would be really similar and that leads leads us to the last question i can see in the chat window interesting one what is your recommendation for aspiring agile coach who is new in the field where would you want they uh, them to start uh, to start from um i can give you my answer and that would be Reading books is awesome if you already practiced something. Attending a training, I, my first meeting with, with Agile with Scrum was attending a training and it was, I was as smart after the training I, as I was before it. I think the best what you can do is on the job training, find, find a company who already does it, who already is Agile, who, who already does a, a, a Scrum and, and, and work with them for them maybe not as a scrum master obviously if you have no skills maybe as an engineer so so experience agile mm. first and now switch your uh, switch your um uh, your, your, your path from engineering for instance what you do right now into agile coaching that, that, that is i think something that is the most effective i saw few people reach a few who started with a pure theoretical theory attending a lot of training sessions and then becoming scrum masters but these were people for instance working for my company so it was a plenty of agile anyway in the company rare examples i'd say uh what would you say scott 
I, I answered the question in the chat slightly different. I took a total different route to you, which is which is why it's quite good for having us mm -hmm. on here because my my thoughts are the skills and the knowledge can come over time. You're going to get that with experience. And yes, by all means, please go and learn it. If you want to do a certification, great. Go and shadow somebody. Go and talk to people. Go and attend meetups. There's there's plenty of free information out there. You don't even need to pay for a course. There's loads of free information. But I think the thing that gets for me that makes a real difference is the mindset and the people skills and the ability to work with people and understand people and people always say ah oh, you shouldn't coach people and all this but actually those are the ones that are you know people are real you know people in, in organizations they call them resources in some places it's like it's not it's people with real dreams hopes and aspirations and if you've got to work with these and sometimes you've got to influence them and mm -hmm. sometimes you've got to guide them and sometimes you might have to put your hat on and mentor them and train them and tell them uh, you've got to have them on side. So for me, you ain't, if you haven't got rapport, if you haven't got that ability to build rapport and you haven't got the ability to to build relationships with individuals and teams and leadership, then you're going to struggle no matter how good you are at Scrum or Kanban or how fantastic you are at, you know, naming all the 12 principles. And <laughs> it's just, you need you need that at there. And I don't like calling them softer skills because I think they're, they're not soft, they're really powerful. They're really, yeah. really uh, strong. And I think that's for me is, like I said, the personal development stuff, really understanding insights on yourself and, and others with really powerful in your, in your day job. The skills and the knowledge can, that can come. So different, different uh, take on it anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, nice shot. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Scott. I think uh, people would be interested in what's next. And um, here we go. Uh, Scott and I are meeting again um, for another Agile Encounter, um, uh, June 15th, uh, same uh, same time, uh, 6 o'clock in the UK, 7 o'clock Central European Summertime. Uh, the, the topic is how to encourage teams to be vulnerable. Scott, would you like to say a few more words about it? This is one of my, so this is going to be totally different. So these webinars are, aren't really interactive. Yes, you can use the chat, you can ask some Q&A, but it's really just myself and Pavel. But this, we want to change it. We're going to have a Zoom link. We're going to make it really interactive. We're going to be using breakout rooms and we're going to get you a chance to actually experience one of my favorite techniques and one of my favorite things I use with teams. I know there's people in the chat tonight that I, uh, have been through this with me. And it's about getting people to talk about their values and principles and their behaviors as a team and how to really, it's really good for forming teams, but also really good to reset, especially if you've got new people joining. Um, it's about creating that that um, artifact that we can use to hold each other accountable and really try and grow the team. And people will be vulnerable in there. So what we're going to do, we're going to show you through the exercise really quickly. We're going to take you through the exercise. You're going to get to part of the, you actually feel it in real, you know, real time. And as if it's your team, your team you're doing it with. And then uh, you'll get given the template to use a, a mural template. You can download it if you want or send you a link to it and whatnot. You can you can copy it and, and hopefully take it uh, into your own organization and, and work with teams and that if you wanted to. It's just a little bit different to a webinar. It's really interactive. So um, tell your friends, bring people along. It should be good. Look Stay tuned. Sounds exciting. Thank you very much, uh, Scott. Thank you, everybody, for your awesome questions and um, uh, watching us today. Uh, see you next time. Uh, have a good, uh, have a good one.